few months back, I saw an interview of arranger and music theorist Jacob Collier in which he discussed a theory about the foundations of major and minor chords. He constructed two chords and compared the two as being very bright and very dark, respectively. This is brightening and this is darkening. If you want to make something more minor, then instead of using more minor scales, I, I think going further around the flat side circle of fifths is what is how you do it. Like if you go, you compare that to, like that's super leading versus Phrygian or Locrium. And that is the most profound difference between major and minor that I've ever come across. This is a sensible way of describing major and minor harmonies and a common one, but it got me thinking about the terminology that we use to describe the sound of music. Music is a strange subject to discuss in specific terms. We throw around words like bright, dark, thin, and fat to describe somewhat ambiguously the way something sounds. Despite their relative inaccuracy, we tend to be moderately successful in communicating our general intent. This alone might not mean much, but we use similar words to describe many other sensations and experiences, both in the arts and outside of them. Take this track from the anime Non Non Biori. Its arrangement is full and dense, with a strong emphasis on the lower frequencies as a whole. We might refer to this sound as dark, thick, or warm. Perhaps it didn't sound that way to you absolutely, but relatively, compare that to this track from the anime True Tears. Its arrangement is top-heavy, focusing on the high frequencies. We might refer to it as bright, or thin, or even cold. While we might not say that the track as a whole can be described only in those terms, it should be clear how different it is from the previous example. As a scenario composer, I spend a lot of time thinking about how to represent certain things musically. Not just emotions, but locations, colors, textures, and sensations. What does falling snow sound like? What does a hummingbird sound like? Over time, I've noticed more correlations that seem to point towards something deeper. The words we use to describe music can be found in other experiences. I don't think I'd be alone in grouping together the low, heavy sound of a cello with a dark red room, a warm blanket, a hot cocoa, and a thick hearty stew. Or to contrast that by grouping the sound of a high, thin ukulele with a bright blue room, a cool breeze, lemonade, and a light acidic salad. To me, it suggests that there's something that runs deep in the human consciousness about how we perceive things on a fundamental level. It's sort of comparable to synesthesia, but not as specific as that, and not limited to such a small percentage of the population. The other day, I was at the doctor's office, and I had my blood taken, and I remember that the initial feeling of the needle was a sharp, focused, bright, pain, which a moment later transformed into a dull, generalized, very dark sort of pain. Maybe I'm just crazy. I don't feel that I am, though. Too many people share this vocabulary to some degree to describe the same sorts of things for me to believe that it's an experience that's unique only to me. This isn't the sort of topic that you can just Google. I want to understand it, and I don't even know where to begin. That's partly why I made this video. Maybe there's someone out there who studied this who might be able to explain it or at least provide a place to start looking. But hey, that's just something to keep in mind. Thanks for watching.